Uh, good evening once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today, 26th of May. Uh, time now is 4.03. We are starting the third series on SPDs. So we are going to focus on SPDs in communication. Why SPDs is very important in the low voltage uh, segment. So today our speaker, Mr. Vijay Kumar, and also our moderator will take up the question and answer. So Vijay is going to talk about the power surges and transient voltage events in the low voltage system. He also will be talking about potential risk and consequences of power surges on sensitive system like, you know, it could be any electronic uh, equipment and data centers, introduction of search protection devices and their working principle, benefit of incorporating SPDs in low voltage system, choosing the right SPDs for a specific application and requirement. And the last, best practices for installation, maintenance and testing of SPDs. So this is the last and final series on SPDs. We have been receiving fantastic responses from uh, many of our webinar, especially for uh, SPDs, we got a very good response. So we have over uh, 225 uh, registration uh, for this uh, webinar. So I would like to, I would like to thank uh, Cape for uh, uh, initiating many many uh, webinars, over 130 webinars so far since last one and a half year. And they are celebrating 25th year of their existence in the uh, business. As you all know, in 1990, CAPE introduced and installed the first SPDs for protecting industrial electronic system. DC combiner solution for solar PV were unknown once when CAPE delivered outdoor DC panels in 2002. So in 2002, SPD came into existence and CAPE was the first company to introduce uh, SPDs in industrial electronic system. In 2004, CAPE did a lot of technical seminar on lightning protection, not only help industries in solving failure related to lightning, surges and earthing, but gave in-depth knowledge about international standard. So for all those people who are listening to me, uh, our next webinar will be focus on lightning protection. So, so as we are heading towards the one of the best uh, monsoon, so we thought let's do the lightning protection for next webinar. It will be probably in the second or third week of June. So in 2019, global earthing system, interconnecting EHV, HV, and LV, and ELV system for large industrial and commercial installation and smart cities were introduced. Starting of the pro first project in India, solution with almost negligible touch voltage and, with, and without earth pit in soil. This is a very interesting uh, topic that we have been discussing. You know, having a building without earth pit in soil. Very interesting subject. In 2022, CAPE introduced SOLVE, a digital platform as knowledge and process partner to ensure safe operation of low voltage electricity. Leading the market with right solution is CAPE Moto and the team in CAPE Electric are continuously trained to provide end-to-end -end solution from design to implementation, rather than just moving the boxes uh, and uh, you know forgetting the services. So they have been implementing and handholding the entire process, design, implementation, ex execution, and customer satisfaction. With me today, I have one of the well-known face in the electrical safety, Mr. Gopakumar. He is also the president of NFE, National Federation for Engineers for Electrical Safety. 
So Gopu Kumar uh, is having more than 28 years of experience in electrical safety, lightning protection, EMI and EMC, etc. Is a member of BAS, IEC and uh, NEC, founder member of and president of the NFE. He published the article in various magazine and published the book called uh, The Missing Link, the very popular uh, book in demand. So those who wish to have this missing link, the book authored by Mr. Gopakumar, you can send the mail where Lakshmi will be uh, connecting our mail ID there in the chat box. If you're interested to receive the book, you can probably send a request there, request to us. Uh, today, our uh, subject expert, Mr. Vijay Singh, is an accomplished engineer in electro electrical and electronic with over 10 years of experience. He specialized in lightning and such protection system. His expertise in this area is derived from extensive research and practical site studies on more than 100 sites related to search surges and lightning protection. His experience include conducting site studies in various sectors such as data centers, hospital, telecom. Additionally, he has worked on a project for major oil and gas companies such as HPCL and IOCL, designing and supporting the implementation of lightning and surge protection system in the oil and gas segment. He has rich experience in handling projects with major government sector such as airport authorities, Indian Railway, NTPC, and BHL, which has made him specialist in search protection devices in the country. So currently, he is the product manager for search protection, search protect, uh, search protection devices at Cape Electric Private Limited. Let's hear from uh, Vijay Singh. I would request Vijay Singh to enlighten us on the low voltage, such protect SPDs for low voltage. So I now welcome uh, Mr. Vijay Singh to take over from here. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak on this forum. I would also like to thank all the participants, uh, Mr. Gopal Kumar, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Yeah. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. No, not yet. Is it visible now? No, no. I think uh, I have unshared it. So, yeah. Now, now visible. We can make it full mm -hmm. screen. Okay. Okay. Now, I hope it is visible. It's visible. So, can you make yeah. the full screen? So, yeah, already made it. Yeah, now you are good to go. Everything is perfect. Oh, okay. Audio is good, and your share uh, video is good. So we are, we are now into this third webinar of the series surge protection devices. Earlier we had discussed about uh, uh, importance of connecting wires, uh, impulse current rating, uh, backup fuse in the earlier two webinars. In this webinar, we are going to discuss mostly about the communication SPDs why we need communication SPDs, what type of SPDs we need to install, what are the uh, components inside the communication SPDs. Because already in India, SPDs are uh, somewhat a neglected subject. And out of this neglected subject, communication SPDs are even more neglected. A lot of people, a uh, lot of uh, industrial people, they don't even realize that they need uh, the importance of communication SPDs are as good as power SPDs. So before starting with the communication SPDs, we'll just brush up what we had discussed in last two webinars as well. So uh, these are the various standards uh, for surge protection devices. IEC 61643 part 11, 2011, which is a uh, testing standard for low voltage surge protection devices. IEC 61643 part 12, uh, which, is, which uh, tells about the selection of power SPDs. IEC 61643 part 21, uh, which is a testing standard for communication SPDs. IEC 61643 part 22, which is uh, which gives the selection of communication SPDs. Again, IEC 61643 uh, part 31 and 32, 
which are mostly for solar PV SPDs. Again, uh, it, one is a testing standard. Second one is second one deals in the uh, collection of SPDs. Uh, now it has to be noted that uh, same IEC 61643 part 11 and part 12 has been adopted by IS also as IS 16463 part 11 and part 12. Okay, uh, lightning protection standard IEC 62305 part 4 also gives uh, some details about surge protection devices. Whereas IEC 60364 uh, part 5 part 53 gives uh, <coughs> how an SPD should be installed in an electrical system. So these are the various standards for surge protection devices for both power as well as communication. Again, uh, in last uh, webinars, we have studied that there are basically two type of impulses. First one is 10 by 350 micro uh, waveform, uh, microsecond waveform. Second one is 8 by 20 microsecond uh, waveform. 10 by 350 microsecond waveform, uh, in the common name, we also call it as a lightning search, whereas 8 by 20 microsecond waveform uh, can also be called as a switching search. Based on these waveforms, there are two types of SPD classified. First one is class 1 SPD, which can withstand lightning waveform or lightning impulses, which is nothing but a 10 by 350 microsecond waveform. Second one is class 2 SPD, which is uh, nothing but a SPD, which is tested with 8 by 20 uh, microsecond waveform. So based on these type of waveforms, SPD, SPDs has been classified into two types, class 1 and class 2. Now we are going to see how an SPD is collected uh, in an electrical circuit and how it operates. So this is a typical uh, 3 plus 1 connection uh, shown uh, for a uh, 3 phase 4 wire system or 3 phase 5 wire system as we may say. So we have a 4 pole SPD, SPD 1, 2 and 3 which is connected between 3 lines and neutral. And then we have SPD4 which is connected between uh, neutral and earth. This is called a 3 plus 1 connection. Uh, similarly, there is one more connection which is called as 4 plus 0 connection in which all 3 lines and neutral is directly connected to earth. So uh, just for the sake of understanding because we already have discussed this uh, particular thing in the last webinar. Just for the sake of understanding, uh, for the catching up, we will just discuss this thing. Let us imagine uh, there was a surge. And due to this surge, uh, our earth uh, goes to a very high potential. Let's see, uh, the potential of earth reaches to, let's say, 10 kV. Now, in this case, uh, there is a potential difference between P and neutral, which is more than 1500 volt. 1500 volt is nothing, uh, It is, uh, but the voltage production level of SPD4. That means as soon as voltage goes more than 1500 volt, SPD4 will start operating. So here, in this case, as you can see, uh, neutral is at 10 kV. Just an imaginary value, 10 kV. So there is a potential difference between uh, line and uh, earth, uh, sorry, neutral and earth of 10 kV. Due to this potential difference, SPD4 operates. It creates a short circuit. As soon as it creates a short circuit, the voltage which was only at earth uh, previously now reaches to neutral also because, as we all know, in case of short circuit, voltage becomes same. So now our neutral is at a higher potential. Earth is at a higher potential, but our RYB is still at the same potential. Now, but uh, you can see. <clears throat> now, SPD 1, 2, and 3 uh, can experience some potential difference, which will be more than 1500 volt or which will be more than the voltage protection level of that SPD. Because of this uh, potential difference, SPD 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, and 3 will operate simultaneously and now whole system will be at the same potential. So, our main purpose of uh, uh, using an SPD was to create an EQ potential and this way we are going to achieve EQ potential by the use of SPD. Now again, the major most important thing about this whole uh, this whole operation was this complete thing happened in few nanoseconds. Generally the fastest available SPD in market is 1 nanosecond and even up to 2500 nanosecond is acceptable. But the best uh, possible uh, result would be 1 nanosecond. So all these things happened in a few nanoseconds. Okay. The second major point we had discussed was uh, the effect of lead length. This is what we had discussed uh, in the last webinar. Suppose we have considered a one meter of cable and one meter of cable has a impedance of one micro Henry. On the right side, you can see a graph which shows DIDT for three different impulses. First positive impulse, first negative discharge and subsequent impulse. So <clears throat> we can see that the DI by DT will be very, very high. So in case of first positive impulse, the DI by DT will be around 20 uh, kilo amperes per microsecond. That means uh, uh, per microsecond, the rate of change of current will be around 20 kilo ampere. 
Now, we all know that voltage is equal to uh, L di by dt. L is nothing but the impedance. Impedance in this case is 1 micro Henry. So, uh, in case of first positive impulse, the di by dt was 20 kilo ampere per microsecond. So, the total voltage drop across 1 meter of wire is around uh, 20 kV per meter. Similarly, in case of first negative discharge, uh, di by dt was 100 kV per meter. Now, uh, once we, once we consider uh, impedance to be 1 micro Henry, the potential uh, uh, drop across 1 meter of cable, 1 meter of wire length would be around 100 kV uh, per meter. Similarly, in case of sub sub uh, subsequent impulses, LDI by DT, if we consider the same formula LDI by DT, uh, 1 microsecond will be uh, the impedance. And the DI by DT as shown in graph is around 200 kilo ampere per microsecond. Voltage drop will be around 200 kV per meter. So you can see even a one meter of wire, which is generally what we use in our uh, electrical system while connecting the SPD can cause up to 200 kV uh, per meter voltage drop. Practically, it may be a little bit less or a little bit more, but still it's very high value. This was, this is one of the major problem which, which we are experienced while uh, connecting an SPD. This is a few example, few photograph of how we are connecting an SPD. You see the length of wire, uh, this connecting SPD, even we cannot see where it is going to terminate. It will be around four or five meters. The reason being the existing DB does not have a space to accommodate SPD. So once we don't have a space, what we do is we put a separate box for SPD and then we use around two, three or even a, a five meters of wire. Now in this case, do you really think this SPD is going to work? No. If we use an SPD with five meters of wire length, it is not going to work. Now, then what is the solution? How do we overcome this problem? So we had discussed that in the last segment also, the solution is bus bar mounted SPDs. These kind of SPDs can directly be mounted on the earth bus bar. If, as you can see in the bottom figure, this can directly be mounted on the earth bus bar. Hence the wire length can be reduced by a huge extent. Apart from that, these SPDs have a very uh, a multiple advantage. Like they have large thermal capacity electrodes to absorb heat during the surge. It has a very strong uh, aluminum housing. So in, in case of failure or uh, during anything, it prevents any kind of explosion. This is uh, packed with a, a pressure of around 1500 plus pounds that results in very low dynamic uh, resistance and higher conductivity of the SPD. Since it's a metal, there is no fuel uh, to burn in case uh, there is a fire or in case there is an uh, explosion or something like that. Anyways, there won't be any explosion because of a strong aluminum housing in this case. Plus, it has a response time of one nanosecond. It is warranted for 10 years. Again, we had discussed in at length about this particular model, how this is going to, once we use this kind of SPD, we can be uh, assured that our system is protected because now these SPDs are connected in parallel. Even the Dindel SPDs are connected in parallel. We have to physically go and check whether SPD is working or not working because it's not a tripping device or it won't trip after every set. So by using a Dindel SPD, we, we are liable to check every five, six months about the uh, working status of the SPD. Whereas in this kind of bus bar mounted SPDs, we are not really, uh, we should not be worried about the working status because it is not going to fail. Probably it is not going to fail. We are giving a warranty of 10 years and expected life of 20 to 30 years, at least in Indian conditions. Uh, the second parameter, okay, this is one of the graph which shows the voltage drop. Now we had uh, discussed about the voltage drop across the wire length. So we have shown three graphs out of this two are for the strikes of series SPDs that is the bus bar mounted SPDs and third one is for the Dindel, uh, Dindel SPD. So you see once the surge current increases the led through voltage across SPD will be very high. For example for a 40 kilo ampere surge current a Dindel, will, uh, Dindel mounted SPD will have an effective voltage protection level of around uh, 16 kV. Whereas on the same surge current, a bus bar mounted SPD will have a voltage protection level of very less, less than uh, 2 kV. So in all the cases, even if, if the surge is of a very high rating, our system, our uh, equipments are protected. The second issue, uh, second problem what we discussed in case of SPDs was the use of backup fuse. Now SPDs are as discussed one of the most sensitive devices in the electrical network. It has a response time in nanoseconds. Again, it is connected between line to neutral and line to P. Now, during the event of SPD operation, it offers a very low impedance, almost like a short circuit. Now, <clears throat> just imagine uh, we have connected an SPD as shown in the diagram 
Now, after uh, the end of the life of SPD, let's say five, six, eight years uh, after that, SPD has failed. Now, there is a probability that SPD can fail in a short circuit mode. Once an SPD fails in a short circuit mode, there will be a short circuit current which flows from the line or from the power source through the SPD into the earth or neutral, probably into the earth mostly. So this short circuit current will have very high, uh, will have very high energy. So this energy dissipated during the conduction of the short circuit current is very high and can cause a fire hazard. So generally there is a thermal disconnector inside the SPD for the same purpose, but it has certain limitation. It has certain rating. So every manufacturer will provide a certain rating of the main fuse, this main, this main fuse. Once the rating of this main fuse goes more than that certain value, the SPD needs an additional fuse. This additional fuse uh, will provide a security or it will uh, provide safety in the event of SPD failure. It, this failure can be due to aging or it can be due to a temporary over voltage. It can be due to a leakage current or it can be due to follow current. Like in case of spark gap, uh, due to follow current, there is a strong possibility of generation of short circuit current. So this kind of short circuit can be provided by uh, this uh, putting an additional backup fuse. Now, this is one purpose of this backup fuse. Uh, if we read IS732, they have explained some other purpose also, some more purpose also for backup fuse that is to achieve priority to continuity of supply or to achieve priority to continuity of protection. Because if you see this uh, example, if you see this figure, uh, uh, this is the equipment to be protected. We have connected SPD with a fuse. Now, in case there is a uh, SPD has failed, there will be a surge current which flows through the fuse and due to that fuse gets uh, blown off. Once the fuse gets uh, blown off, this SPD will be disconnected from the supply, uh, from the supply. Hence the equipment will get a continuous supply. This is the first case where we are ensuring continuity of supply with the use of backup fuse. Second case is priority to continuity of protection. In this case, we are not using any backup fuse in series with SPD but we are using a fuse in series with the line. If you see during the event of uh, this SPD failure, during the event of short circuit, this fuse will blow. Once this fuse blows, it disconnects the equipment from the supply. <coughs> so here the supply is disconnected to the equipment as soon as SPD fail. That means in any case, your equipment is going to get protected. If you need to, if you want a uh, supply to be continuous, or if you want uh, to give supply to the equipment, you have to replace the SPD. So for the critical uh, equipment like PLC, UPS, where you don't want your equipment to be unprotected, even the fire alarm panel, we can use this kind of, uh, we can use backup fuse in this way so that our uh, supply will be, uh, our protection will be continuous. So these are the two uh, basic uh, use of, uh, another two use of backup fuse. One to ensure priority to continuity of supply. Second to ensure priority to continuity of protection. Now, third case is uh, if we want both a priority to continuity of supply as well as priority to continuity of protection. Now, in this case, we use a SPD with a redundant feature. That means inside one SPD, there will be two fuse and two uh, SPDs. In case SPD, uh, in case SPD one fails, second SPD will be connected and will keep on protecting your equipment and supply will also be continuous throughout the equipment. Now, how do we achieve this? To achieve this, we have to use a SPD with uh, this kind of surge protection device, which has a redundancy in, uh, inside it. Uh, this kind of SPDs have basically two uh, protective components inside uh, each plug. So that once the main, uh, once the first component fail, second component immediately will come um, uh, under operation. It has a three stage uh, time indicator. That means normal in normal SPDs, the flag indication is like uh, green means SPD is working. Red means SPD is not working. Whereas in this case, SPD will first go from green to yellow and then it can go from yellow to red. Additionally, these SPDs has a uh, short circuit rating up to 50 kilo ampere. Now, there is one more problem with uh, dim rail SPDs, the other conventional SPDs available in the market is uh, there is a lot of confusion about the backup fuse. People don't know what they need to install as a backup protection. Sometimes they'll install MCB, sometimes they will install even MPCB as a backup protection. Plus, uh, there is another confusion about what rating backup protection uh, need to be used. So, <clears throat> to ensure that uh, there is no confusion, no wrong product has been, uh, should be used, 
another product has been developed by us which is an spd with an integrated fuse so this is an spd with an integrated fuse it has our patented phase edt technology it has uh, it can uh, offer a safe behavior under lightning condition it is not going to fail it is not going to explode it is not going to catch fire it's a fuseless design uh, with the fuseless design you can save lot of space a uh, lot of uh, money need can be saved <coughs> again uh, due, due to no fuse there will be uh, lesser connecting wires less complexity lesser space and lower cost again uh, it's a reliable connection device it has a impulse current of around 25 kilo ampere per pole uh, line to neutral in case of 3 plus 1 connection and neutral to earth in case of 3 plus 1 connection it will be 100 kilo amperes uh, apart from that one of the major advantage it has is it has a short circuit rating of around 100 kilo amperes so once we use a spd with an integrated fuse once we use a spd with an integrated fuse short circuit rating becomes a very important parameter because uh, if we use this spd in a main incomer panel sometimes they have a, a fault current of 65 kilo ampere 80 uh, kilo ampere even 65 kilo ampere is very very common in those cases 50 kilo ampere spd uh, the short circuit rating of 50 kilo ampere will not work we have to use an spd with a short circuit rating of 100 kilo ampere so this is a class 1 spd with the integrated fuse again these are pluggables you can just if if one plug fails you can just easily replace the plug itself you need not to replace the complete setup so now this is a type 2 spd or class 2 spd with a integrated fuse again this is also pluggable uh, it will also save you a lot of space because there is no fuse involved it has a nominal current of 20 kilo ampere per pole again it also has a short circuit rating of 200 kilo amperes per pole so that is going to help you a lot if you are using an integrated fuse and it has a response time of 25 nanoseconds as well so this is what we had discussed in the earlier webinars uh, so we had just brushed up a little because i've been it's been a long time i think 2 3 week backs we had the last webinar now we are going to uh, okay discuss one more parameter which is called the impulse current again lot of people uh, have asked this kind of questions what should be the impulse current in an spd how do we decide the impulse current in an spd so uh, we have considered two type of connections a 4 plus 0 connection and 3 plus 1 connections so we can consider uh, we will uh, now there are general conceptions also and then you can do the risk assessment also so once you do the risk assessment let us suppose your building comes in a lightning protection level 1 so we all know that lightning protection level 1 expected lightning current will be 200 kilo ampere so as per the standard uh, out of 200 kilo ampere impulse current 50% of the impulse current goes to the ground remaining 50% of the impulse current will come back again to our building through earthing or through other any other means so <clears throat> in case of level 1 we can expect that maximum expected surge current this is the maximum expected surge current we are talking about will be around 100 kilo amperes so in case of 3 plus 1 connections we have to ensure that neutral to earth plug will carry this whole 100 kilo amperes so it should be rated with 100 kilo amperes whereas line to neutral plug in 3 plus 1 con uh, connection can be 25 kilo ampere similarly in case of 4 4 plus 0 connection where all three lines and neutral is directly connected to uh, earth there this 100 kilo ampere current will be divided into three lines and one neutral uh, this thing uh, path hence per path or per pole impulse current should be 25 kilo ampere similarly in case of level 2 expected uh, 50% of the expected uh, impulse current would be 75 kilo ampere so <laughs> line to neutral and line to p uh, in case of 4 plus 0 and uh, 3 plus 1 connection would be around 18 kilo ampere whereas a neutral to p in place of 3 plus 1 connection would be around 75 kilo ampere then again buildings with level 3 and 4 buildings which fall under level 3 and 4 will have an expected uh, surge current of 50 kilo ampere so in case of 4 plus 0 connection this 50 kilo ampere will be divided into four parts and hence each pole must uh, be able to withstand around 12.5 kilo ampere whereas in case of 3 plus 1 connection line to neutral will be around 12.5 kilo ampere whereas neutral to earth since it has to carry the complete current would be around 50 kilo ampere so this is how we are, uh, we should be selecting a impulse current for a building because this was one of the major doubts of the lot of people a lot of people have uh, uh, shown interest in this particular slide while selecting the spd
now we will discuss about the fundamentals of uh, we will discuss the fundamentals of uh, uh, telecom signal and data line protection generally when we talk about uh, signal transmission so signal transmission can happen in two ways uh, first can be uh, in a differential mode signal transmission second in a common mode signal uh, transmission what differential mode signal transmission means suppose there are two wires correct uh, carrying signal a and signal b if the transmission is between the two wires a and b then this is called a differential mode signal transmission whereas if uh, the transmission is between a common reference uh, between uh, signal a and signal b this common reference can be shielded or functional uh, or the functional so if the uh, communication is between uh, two lines and this common point or the common reference wire then it is called as common mode protection so surges uh, su common mode signal transmission so surges may come in <coughs> common mode uh, transmission also they can come in differential mode transmission <laughs> again uh, not only common and differential mode transmission here we have shown an example of differential mode uh, communication though transient can be of opposite polarity also you can see two line line a and line b two type of uh, two signals so that uh, the transient can be positive side as well as negative side on the line b and same the positive tra uh, transient will be clamped on the positive side uh, side whereas negative transient will be clamped on the negative side Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, this uh, uh, in the last slide we had discussed about the communication line, but transients on the power line may also be common on differential. Here is the example of a common mode uh, in a power line and a differential mode in a power line. In a common, uh, in the common mode uh, for a power line, the current will be in the same direction for both live conductors as well as neutral. Whereas in case of differential mode uh, for a power line, live conductor and neutral will carry current in opposite direction. So even the transients can come both in the common mode as well as differential mode. Now, uh, this is what can happen to our integrated uh, circuit if we are not using surge protection device. I am sure uh, people from the industrial background might have seen this picture earlier because I have seen it multiple times. So I have seen multiple times electronic devices are failing. So this is what can happen if we don't use a proper, uh, if you use an unprotected data circuits. So uh, Mr. Gordon Moore, who was the founder of Intel has given a law, which says that the number of transistor junctions in integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. Now, uh, there's a graph from 1971 to 2011, which shows that in 1971, the number of transistor junctions were around 2,300 in a single uh, IC circuit, which now has reached to up to 2.6 billion in 2011. That too, again, it was a 10 years uh, back data. Now also the things have increased. The number of uh, transistor junctions have even increased now. This is what called as Boris law in terms of microprocessor and transistor counts. Now, <clears throat> since the number of uh, transistors, number of components are increasing, the size of the IC is decreasing almost uh, you can say every day or like it's decreasing over the period of time so if we see in 1950s our uh, electronics equipment would were able to withstand around 0.1 up to 10 joules of energy they were able to withstand so we, uh, we they had they are giving certain energy to this electronics uh, equipment and withstanding and they were noticing how much they can withstand now in the latest year uh, 2020s, the equipment which were able to withstand 10 joules now can withstand only up to 10 power minus 8 joules or 10 power minus 9 joules. The reason being the sizes of electronics have been reduced in a greater way. For example, we can see our televisions. Earlier they were very sick, CRT tubes were used, and now we have flat screen LED TVs. With the reduce in size, the insulation level also decreases. And once the insulation level decreases, <coughs> It is very, uh, 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 the equipment can fail very easily, even with a small amount of energy uh, can uh, fail an equipment, uh, can it destroy an equipment. So this is uh, the type of uh, components which are generally used in a signal line SPD. 
there are three common components which are used in a signal uh, line spd signal again uh, first one is air gaps or gas discharge tube second one is metal oxide varistors third one is uh, silicon avalanche diode or silicon diodes or it is also called transops in some way uh, sometimes it is also called as transops so we have uh, taken three properties the energy withstanding capacity the residual voltage and the follow current in case of gas discharge tube they have a very good energy withstanding capacity up uh, they have poor residual voltage that means the operating voltage the clamping voltage will be sparkle voltage will be little high and they have a problem of follow current whereas in case of metal oxide varistors they have a decent energy handling capacity uh, a decent residual voltage or decent uh, low spark over voltage and they have they don't have a follow current uh, problem similarly in case of uh, silicon uh, silicon diodes or silicon silicon avalanche diode they have a very very poor uh, they can hand, uh, handle very low amount of energy but they have very good uh, residual voltage the clamping voltage is very good they operate at a very low voltage plus they do not have a problem of follow current these are the three components generally used uh, for a, to protect a data and signal lines and these are the properties of these components now these are uh, the characteristics of these components of this non linear component uh, you can see that gdt is clamping at around 3 to 4000 volt whereas uh, residual voltage across uh, the metal oxide varistor is around 800 volt and uh, voltage uh, residual voltage across silicon avalanche diode is around 600 volt so the clamping voltage for silicon avalanche uh, sad is least whereas mov is little bit higher and gdt has a very high clamping voltage so <laughs> to protect a normal uh, uh, equipment or normal data equipment or signal protection various component are used uh, together to give the optimum protection this is an example uh, of such kind of device whereas where uh, gdt a metal oxide varistor and a transop also known as diodes have used to give the optimum pro uh, protection now this kind of protection can be achieved in stages it is very important to ensure that there is energy coordination between all three equipment Uh, GDT, metal oxide varistor, and the diodes. Now you see stage one, stage two, and stage three. Uh, in this kind of circuit, as we know, the fastest or the least clamping voltage uh, is for the silicon avalanche diode. So once there is a surge, silicon avalanche diode, the SAD or the transop will operate faster. So once it operates, let's say there uh, there was a surge of 10 kV, and this uh, this uh, transop has a clamping voltage of 600 volt. now is it, it will particularly clamp that voltage up to 600 volt now in this case we have to ensure there is a proper energy coordination between the other two devices also because once this uh, transop uh, clamps the voltage other two equipment will not work so for that purpose there is a small impedance it can be inductance or resistance is given between stage 2 and stage 3 the purpose of this impedance is to create a voltage drop so that stage 2 devices also trip similarly stage 2 and stage 1 also there is an impedance <coughs> which is given which ensure the operation of gdt also so for example uh, stage 3 uh, transop operates at 600 volt whereas an mov operates at 800 volt so we have to put the impedance uh, in between stage 2 and stage 3 so that it creates a voltage drop of around 200 volt so that our mov also operates so once mov operates <laughs> again uh, the gdt let's say operates at 1200 volt or 1400 volt so in that case we have to ensure the value of impedance in such a way that voltage drop across that impedance will be around 600 volt so uh, once the voltage drop is 600 volt so 600 plus 800 it becomes uh, 1400 volt so now our spd uh, our gdt which was uh, for which clamping voltage was 1400 volt now operates now this values i have just assumed the values it can it will change again <clears throat> from case to case it is going to change and for the same reason the value of imp uh, this impedance become very important uh, very important now a lot of people have this uh, question why can't a single mov or why can't a single uh, spd can be made for all the applications now <clears throat> because of this reason there are multiple models we have multiple models for multiple operations for example for ethernet we have different model for rs232 we have different model even rs485 we have different model 
in rs 45 also we have five to six models like for uh, uh, paired light or for other uh, shield light tables for all the things we have different kind of spds that is uh, we have to use uh, a different impedance for different application based on the frequency and the requirement of the system so a good manufacturer will have different models with different impedances now if a manufacturer claim that it has a, a universal spd that works for almost all the uh, communication or signal in that case probably uh, that particular manufacturer will be using a gas discharge tube and other two components will not be used in that uh, device and for signal and communication line protection gdt has typically a very high voltage uh, voltage clamping uh, rating hence uh, equipment will be under very high stress it will experience very high voltage even during the surge timing below we have shown a graph which shows that <clears throat> first one is about the response time response time of gdt is the slowest mov is faster than uh, gdt and uh, transop or the diode is faster than mov uh, below that there is a graph about the energy handling capacity so gdt can uh, uh, handle the highest amount of surges uh, mov can handle little bit lesser surges when compared to gdt and diode can handle very uh, less surges now because of this energy coordination the maximum energy will be uh, going through the gdt and very less amount of energy will be going through this uh, transop or the silicon avalanche diode again this is also a graph uh, which shows uh, the stage operation of energy co uh, coordination during the during the uh, uh, spd operation the gdt the red color area the an amount of energy handled by gdt is very high as shown in the figure mov can will handle a little bit uh, lesser energy and diode will handle a very less uh, energy and uh, the white color section is the final residual voltage across the equipment which is very very less once we use the stage energy coordination once we use this uh, these three uh, components in a coordinated way so again this is a, a pictorial uh, representation of operation of these three devices uh, gdt mov and uh, diode first one is a normal this thing a normal surge which is around 8 to 10 kv gdt will clamp at a 600 volt uh, level now mov has little bit lesser clamping voltage which is around uh, 100 volt whereas diode will have even lesser uh, clamping voltage which is around uh, 50 to 40 to 50 volt and final residual voltage across the equipment will be very less and around 20 to 25 volt which our equipment can send uh, very easily in, this is an example of how uh, how a device can be used using these three combinations they have uh, gas discharge tube uh, at the stage 3 uh, stage 1 then there is a mov with rest uh, parallel circuit of resistor and inductance uh, for the voltage drop similarly there is a diode on the stage uh, 3 on the 1 2 there is diode on the left uh, right hand side left hand side there is gdt and in between there is the mov in case of operation first this diodes will operate then there will be some voltage uh, drop uh, drop across this uh, series uh, component coordinating elements after that our mov will operate due to the voltage drop after that again there will be some voltage drop between the other uh, components and then our GDT will operate. GDT will is going to handle the maximum amount of uh, energy, which will uh, ensure that our uh, diode is not stressed. And diode will ensure that very less residual voltage goes into the equipment, which will ensure that our equipment is not uh, going to be stressed about the voltage. This is a normal uh, clamping performance of a 12 uh, 12 volt uh, transient barrier of a diode. We had applied a 6 kb 1.2 by 50 voltage uh, microsecond voltage waveform with a current of around 3 kilo ampere 8 by 20 microsecond so we can see that the clamping voltage for the diode was around 10 volt it's just a pictorial uh, representation it's just a graph so this is a typical uh, cctv circuits uh, analog uh, cctv circuit this is how we have shown by an example how we need to connect the spds so for a, this kind of analog uh, CCTV operation, we are using three kind of SPDs. Uh, first one is a power SPD for the electrical distribution panel. 
then we are using a coaxial spd for the coaxial cable which is going into the monitor and third one is the communication spd for the control panel now this has to be noted here that this is a, just an example there is no surety that uh, in real life it can be digital uh, cctv operation also they can use a lan wire cat6 cable or any kind of uh, communication can be used this is just an example of how uh, communication spds can be used similarly there are three uh, buildings uh, in a uh, let's say in a plant there is a main building then the filing station then a production plant now a lot of communication will be happening through these buildings now this communication can be through lan through rs485 to 4 by 20 milliampere communication or through any kind of bus so for each and every application we have to ensure that we are choosing the right product we are selecting the right spd and and hence we are ensuring that equipment is free uh, equipment is safe it's not failing so there are multiple uh, spds are available uh, uh, for the protection communication line for example radar radar sls2 and sls4 it's uh, like a universal uh, data spd uh, which can protect almost all kind of lines in this kind of spds there are two particular uh, models are available which are two pair uh, and single pair like a, a two wire for a two wire communication system and a four wire communication system now uh, similarly if the, uh, the lines are symmetrical or if the lines are uh, balanced we have another model called radat sph2 and radat sph4 then we have uh, another spd which is radat sgs3 series and radat sbh p series which are modular and uh, which can be used if there is a separate signal uh, ground if there is separate uh, signal ground pro uh, provided in the communication if there is separate ground wire then we can use this kind of spds then we have another model sui4 which is uh, a modular two pair spd for exposed line which has a very high impedance of around 5 kilo ampere per pair this again we are going to study on the next slide also then we have uh, another model called radat ssh which can be used for the shielded cable then we have another model which can be used with uh, rc contact which are available with rc contact and then we have this compact series spds which we have some in some places this, we have very much space constraints the space is not that much in the plc panel uh, there is very less space we don't have a space to provide this kind of thick spds there we can provide this uh, uniform compact uh, universal compact spd which are available for the two lines as well as for the four uh, four line communication that means for a single pair as well as two pair communication similarly uh, multiple uh, spds are there in that if you see uh, the model on the below the middle one below it is one of the important models uh, for this oil and gas sector <clears throat> these are the uh, it is like a, for m20 glan compatible spds for the explosive environment especially in the oil and gas they have this field equipments where they need threaded uh, they have this threaded uh, type of port where spd need to be installed so these spds are normally installed in this kind of environment explosive environment and gas sector even the water and sewer uh, treatment plant that also we have in the next slides so this is uh, a normal uh, some of the parameters about the normal radiat sls series spd which we had discussed uh, it is tested as per iec category d1 c1 c2 and c3 it has a nominal discharge current of 10 kilo ampere and maximum discharge current of uh, 20 kilo ampere the impulse current rating is around 2.5 kilo ampere uh, per line for a uh, uh, per pair actually per pair of communication for a single pair communication the impulse current will be 2.5 kilo ampere for the four uh, two pair of communication the impulse current will be 5 kilo ampere uh, load current is around 1 uh, 1 ampere now for the communication point of view this load current is very high generally load current will be much much uh, lesser than 1 ampere it will be in milliamps it has got a integrated thermal protection and it has got a very high cut off frequency of 30 uh, megahertz now frequency also plays for a very very important role while selecting a data spd we have to ensure that the spd is which we are selecting has a proper frequency range uh, of the communication system where we are going to install this spd similarly we have uh, a <laughs> radiat sph model which is available in two line and four lines 
uh, it can handle uh, now the advantage with, for this particular model is it can handle a high operational uh, current of around 10 ampere which is very rare but again uh, it is possible there are some application where this high current is uh, required it can be used for uh, balance as well as symmetrical lines now we have again uh, different kind of models with read at sll then read at ssh which can be used for profi bus sinec l2 can bus rs232 and rs485 then we have read at ssh which can be used for uh, shielded cable when wherever we are using a shielded cable the read at ssh can be used these are this is also available in multiple voltage uh, 5 volt 12 volt 30 volt and other series speeds are also available up to 96 volt and there even 110 volt also it is available up to 5 volt to 110 volt we have speeds for communication line now all these speeds for communication lines are ul listed now these all are tested with uh, icvd as well as underwriters laboratory to give you the maximum uh, protection required Now, uh, this was uh, the other segment was for the SPDs, which can be used for uh, uh, our uh, communication, like like uh, for RS-485 communication, that kind of data communication it was used. Now, a lot of places the communication is happening through LAN connectors or maybe a CAT6 cable or uh, in case of our uh, switches or CCTVs, uh, LAN is used. For protection of LAN, uh, this kind of SPDs are used. These are uh, CAT6 compatible SPDs. Again, this comes under IC category D1, C1, C2, and C3. It has a MCOV of 50 volt line to line and 72 volt between uh, two pairs. It is POE compatible, power over Ethernet compatible, can be used with CAT5 cable, CAT5E cable, and CAT6 cable. It has a nominal discharge current of 10 kilo ampere, uh, 8 by 20 microsecond waveform. And it can also handle impulse current of 1 kilo ampere 10 by 350 microsecond waveform. Now we have to, uh, in this case or other data SPDs also, uh, the thing is uh, very less impulse current is expected uh, inside the communication line. It will be maybe because of the coupling radiation and very less conductive surge are, uh, uh, impulse surges are expected in the communication line. Hence the impulse current value is not that much because only partial lightning current is going to come there. Again, uh, for this particular model also, load current is around 1 ampere. It has a cutoff frequency of around 250 megawatt, which is uh, quite high uh, considering the Indian uh, communication frequency in case of LAN. And if you see the connection di uh, uh, diagram on the right hand side, you see between each pair of line, we have used a protective component to ensure that you get the refined protection, uh, the equipment which is connected with particular SPDs are very safe, especially the equipments like uh, TTZ cameras, or the Ethernet switches, which are very expensive and very sensitive. These kind of SPDs can be used to protect those equipments. Now, these are Crone SPDs. Uh, these are available as 10 pair of Crone connectors. Normally, uh, uh, a lot of time during rainy season, we have seen, or even after the rainy, uh, rain or thundering, we have seen that their kind, there is some noise uh, problem in uh, our telephone lines in the industries and all that is due to uh, the surges in the crone uh, network so we can use an spd for crone network that can be able to protect us so it has a nominal current of 5 kilo ampere it has ic it is rated under ic category c1 c2 and c3 uh, the maximum discharge current uh, maximum discharge handling capacity is 10 kilo ampere uh, now load current in case of telephones is very less it's around 0.3 milliampere. Now, this uh, this things has to be noted. Uh, this 0.3 milliampere is for the per uh, GDT. It is per GDT. Now, this picture which is shown is for a 10 pair communication, 10 pair, uh, 10 uh, crone pair. That means 10 lines of crone can be protected with this uh, particular product. And each line will have 10 kiloampere of maximum discharge rating. And each line will have uh, 0.3 milliampere of load current. Again, uh, the cutoff frequency is also very high, up to 30 uh, megahertz. Uh, response time is 100 nanosecond for this particular product. Now, uh, these are coaxial SPDs normally used for uh, RF antennas and all. This is available. Uh, like uh, I'm sure everybody might have uh, seen this kind of uh, coaxial cables. Like, for example, N-type cable, F-type cable, BNC-type connections, UHF-type connection. There are multiple type of connections. There are multiple type of corrections. 
uh, so we have a uh, such protection for all type of connections uh, it the voltage ranges up to 70 volt to 280 volt it can handle a peak power of 40 to 300 uh, watts which is again a very high value of the small spds the normal discharge current of 10 kilo ampere maximum discharge current of 20 kilo ampere uh, it has a very low insertion loss of less than 0.4 dB, return loss less than 20 uh, decibels. Cutoff frequency uh, generally is 2.6 gigahertz, but uh, we have models which are available up to even 6 gigahertz for a special application like uh, of, we have been regularly giving this product to Indian Army. So especially on the areas at a very high altitude like in Jambu and all, they have this uh, <coughs> their uh, transmission going on. They have their uh, what I say, what is the right word? Uh, they have this chalky and something on the mountain. So they communicate with other uh, services, other places through this radio uh, transmitters. And they, uh, they they were experiencing a really uh, common failure. So once we had supplied this kind of product design of coaxial SPDs, the failure uh, in their segment was practically zero. Earlier, without SPDs, they, had, they were experiencing failure almost every time there was a lightning or thundering. So, <clears throat> this was just a case example where I had given where this kind of SPDs were used and it was used uh, and the problem of the client was solved. In this case, client was supposed to be Indian Army. Then again, uh, uh, this is what the communication SPDs were. Another important uh, thing is how do we measure and uh, uh, record an SPD? Now we have installed an SPD. It's a parallel device. It operates and it regains its original position. Now, how do we how do we come to know that as, how many times SPD is operated, or uh, what uh, how many times our SPD has protected our equipment, or how many times SPD has protected our equipment? For that, we can use uh, this kind of surge event recorder, which can be placed near to SPD, which will record the number and time of the surges. For example, you have installed this kind of event recorder uh, near to a let's say your main incomer panel. So now in this uh, this in this recorder you will be able to see how much how many number of times the surges have come. So uh, you can have a data <coughs> about the observation that in a year like you can have a data in a year how many numbers of surges you can expect in your system. This kind of measurements you can do. Now these are <coughs> these recorders have an, uh, LCD screens. It has an integrated battery lithium battery with a three years of battery life. Now this battery can be replaced also. It can record up to 999 number of uh, events. And once you reach that 999 numbers, again, it is going to be a long time uh, till you reach that uh, number. After that, you can just reset it. Again, it will start from one. It is like a two pole device. Its size is around uh, double pole size, 35 mm. Uh, it is dindle mounted. It can be easily mounted on the dindle. Now it, uh, it has a threshold current of 50 ampere. That means as soon as there's a current of 50 ampere, uh, there is as soon as this uh, device monitors or, uh, or it just counts the current of uh, senses the current of 50 amperes, it will count it as a surge. The maximum counting discharge current it can have is around 50 kilo ampere. Now, uh, now this can be achieved. This uh, actually this sensing is achieved through a CT, but it's a special type of current transform. It's a special type of CT because. It is going to measure the surge which is, which is there in the system for a very short time, like say 8 by 20 microsecond, even very small 50 ampere current also it will uh, detect. So it's a very special uh, CT used for this application. Then we have a lightning uh, recorder, uh, which is our Cape Make Roller Basic. Now this can be installed in a lightning protection system on the down conductors to a, if you want to know what is the uh, how many numbers of lightning strike your building experience and how many times your system has worked. So it has a threshold current of 1 kilo ampere 10 by 30 microsecond. That means as soon as a current of 1 kilo ampere passes through this uh, counter, it is going to count it as one, uh, one event. The maximum discharge current or maximum capability for it is around 100 kilo amperes. Again, uh, for a level one uh, lightning protection system, uh, the maximum expected current is 200 kilo ampere, which again will be divided, let's say, in minimum four numbers of down conductors. So, <clears throat> maximum expected current is around 50 kilo ampere only, but we have given 100 kilo ampere as the maximum counting discharge current. 
now this is a search tester or spd tester now uh, this is i am sure it's a quite a new product for everybody now we let's say we have in all the spds uh, have some kind of uh, leakage current or uh, all the spd uh, they it will experience some internal changes with time for example voltage protection level for an spd will keep on increasing after each surge or due to some leakage current the voltage protection level will increase in case of spark gap due to the melting of the uh, point two terminals this voltage protection level will increase so we can use this kind of tester it's a universal spd tester it can test all kind of components once you put an uh, once you connect an spd through uh, across this tester this tester is going to tell you uh, what kind of component is inside the spd whether it's a gdt whether it's mov or whether it's a silicon avalanche diode all these components all three components will be tested by this tester plus it will tell you what is the current voltage production level of the spd for example <clears throat> there was an spd installed uh, near to a very critical equipment in the flag indication it has not failed because internally it has not disconnected but due to some uh, uh, aging or due to uh, leakage current some other reason the voltage production level has reached as a very high point in that case <clears throat> your equipment may fail or let's say you have installed 200 spds and uh, those 200 spds after 3 years or 4 years you want to check the status whether it is actually uh, still uh, what is the voltage production level of that spd in that case we can use this tester and it is going to save you a lot of cost because you need not to replace all uh, spds worth of 30 lakhs or 40 lakhs whatever, whatever the amount you have installed so uh, another advantage this with this particular model is uh, it can be uh, it can test spds of all the manufacturers there is no uh, it's not like only this particular uh, make spd it can test it can test spds with all the manufacturers it can give you uh, the log also log mode also you can use the log mode uh, there is a tft display touch screen interface and very very uh, it's a very easy interface you can easily a uh, normal person can also be uh, uh, can also use it very easily it has a in, in uh, inbuilt uh, rechargeable battery you will get a, a charger also along with this uh, this tester it is very light in uh, weight it is very compact size it can be easily carried <coughs> in hand we do not any it's not a bulky device that has to be carried by very difficult uh, means it can be carried <coughs> very easily now uh, this is a spd monitor like uh, you all know earlier also we had discussed in the earlier webinars all the spds will have some kind of leakage current which will again increase uh, with time so after a certain amount of time this leakage current can uh, create spd failure and can give a shock or it can uh, it can it can prove to be dangerous so once we use uh, this kind of monitoring device <laughs> along with spd it will immediately tell you what is the leakage current of the spd it's a three pole uh, device for all the three plugs it can tell uh, the leakage current so it can measure even a small leakage current of 100 milliampers so it again it has a lithium battery with a life of 2 years it has it has again a remote contact also with 1 ampere uh, rating it's also a two pole device with 35 mm width it can easily be installed it can be used for all kind of spds uh, they, it, it's not like for a certain spd only can it, it can be used so this for the different monitoring and uh, counting equipments we can have for surge protection devices now we have given a example for certain uh, places uh, like uh, this particular uh, case we have taken a mobile base station <coughs> and we have shown how many spds we can install in a typical mobile uh, base station we have a class 1 spd a class 2 spd in sub distribution board class 1 spd during the point uh, point of entry to the building then coaxial spds uh, then again uh, <clears throat> sun lightning counter for your lightning protection system uh, spd light monitoring leakage current device isolating spark gap for creating the equipotential bonding uh, for connecting two earthings where the actual connection is not required during uh, the normal operation again this is one of the uh, this is also one of the product isolating spark gap or equipotential bonding bar, uh, bonding uh, clamps also it is called sometimes uh, for example in a uh, building uh, you have a instrumentation earthing or cleaner and uh, uh, it has to be connected with electrical earthing 
now most cases uh, instrumentation uh, thing people want to keep it separate uh, and not connected with the electrical earth. there we can use this kind of isolating spark gap which can be connected in between these two earthing in the normal operation this will be disconnected continuously uh, continue uh, completely uh, separate from each other only during the event of fault or lightning these two earthing will be connected so you will get the eq potential uh, during the event of lightning and normal state it will not be connected so similarly a photovoltaic system a class 1 spd class 1 dc spd need to be used in the combiner box uh, class 2 uh, dc spd need to be used near to the inverter then communication spd need to be used in uh, photovoltaic system because in the photovoltaic system you have monitoring system string monitoring system which gives you the current value of each string uh, to the inverter for that communication we need to give data signal line spds there are lot of lan connections also available we need to use uh, cat 6 spds uh, spd live monitoring devices uh, we need to use uh, surge counter lightning counter then on the ac side after the inverter also uh, spds can be installed uh, type 1 and type 2 for the wind system again we can use uh, spds for tns or tnc system in the wind normally in the distribution board there is no neutral so we have to use a three pole spds for that then again we have to use a different rs45 communication spds uh, lan communication also happens there for that we need to use a cat 6 spd then we have to use a lightning event counter we should use a lightning event counter uh, in the transformer station we need to use a class 1 or class 2 spd based on the application in the main distribution board we have to use a class 1 spd again that is based on the application generally uh, uh, in the auxiliary control cabinet there is no neutral generally so they use only a three pole spd but again it will change case to case sometimes uh, three plus one spd is also can be used now surge protection for the nozzle of the wind turbine uh, again uh, this is also a case specific requirement or multiple spds are used generally uh, this uh, particular application has a voltage of around 750 volt or even uh, 1000 volt so this kind of spds need to be used uh, which has around uh, line to earth or line to neutral voltage of around 550 volt so the line to line voltage will be 750 or 1000 volt again there will be some uh, uh, transmission or data signaling will be happening uh, about the temperature and wind speed measurement and this uh, temperature and wind uh, speed measurement details is transmitted through rs485 or other uh, modes of communication for that we need to use a communication spd then for the oil and gas segment we use we need to use a multiple spd like class 1 spd class 2 spd isolating spark gap as i explained earlier in this particular segment again uh, uh, a normal threaded spd can also be used because it's an explosive environment now sometimes they have uh, field equipments which need a uh, spd with threaded connections <clears throat> again uh, same uh, spd monitoring devices along with lightning counter can also be used here for the buildings <coughs> main distribution board class 1 spd uh, has to be used and for sub distribution board class 2 spd should be used uh, inside the building there will be multiple communication has happening with the lan rs45 rs232 uh, communication cable uh, low voltage uh, spds with explosive uh, area attack certifications that also need to be provided there are spds available with integrated uh, filters integrated noise filters that also can be used the wastewater measurement uh, again uh, class class 1 spd for the main uh, distribution board class 2 SD, spd for the sub distribution board then inside this water management uh, or sewage treatment plant also there will be multiple communication happening with lan or maybe uh, rs45 rs232 all these lines has to be protected then uh, if you see the serial number 7 is that uh, the threaded spd threaded uh, uh, threaded point spd it can be used for explosive zone uh, same is also generally used in water uh, management plant we are also supplying a lot of uh, this kind of plants uh, railway stations they have multiple requirement like uh, ips panels in the main distribution panel you can use class 1 spd they have telecommunication network they have uh, lan connection they have rs45 connection Generally, in the integrated power supply, they have 
this 3.110 volt power supply that also need to be protected excel counter they have this kind of protection that also need to be protected and again this will change case to case we need to ensure that all the lines all the places are protected the similar arrangement is there for the biogas plants also for the main panel class 1 spd uh, for sub distribution board class 2 spd for signaling uh, rs45 SPD, uh, spd with the ground cable uh, then uh, if there is a shielded cable R rs uh, rated ssh uh, need to be used then for the lan communication cat 6 spd need to be used uh, surge and lightning counters should be used uh, wherever required In normal industrial facility also there will be a main panel where we can use a class 1 SPD, distribution board class 2 SPDs. We have to ensure that critical panels like fire alarm panel, lift panel, all these panels have proper uh, surge protection. For the internal communication, uh, for the switches and CCTVs, uh, CAT6 SPDs can be used. Again, uh, for uh, <clears throat> supplies given to the PCBs and switches, sometimes the DC 110 volt or 24 volt, 36 48 volt DC supply is given. For that type 3 DC SPD shall be used to ensure that there is no failure. So this is uh, uh, this is it from my side. Uh, I've tried to explain uh, in the best possible way uh, about all the applications, all the SPDs I've tried to explain. Still, if you have any questions, you can ask in the question answer uh, uh, box. So here I am ending my presentation. And thank you for the opportunity given to me. Uh, thank you, uh, Dominic sir, Baba Kumar sir, and all the participants for this opportunity. Um, just a second, sir. Uh, so Dominic will uh, join us back. Um, sir, Mr. Gopal Kumar, uh, I know you have answered most of the questions. Uh, would you like to join and uh, comment uh, anything further on to sum up uh, what uh, Vijay Singh has presented, sir? Yes, uh, actually there is nothing uh, more because all the questions are already answered. Uh, today being uh, Friday, normally our programs are on Saturday. Today probably being sun, uh, uh, Friday, I think the number of participants are also a little bit lesser than what we have used to have. Uh, somebody is asking for a soft copy of the presentation. Actually, the we are uploading the videos of the program. All the earlier videos are already there on the YouTube. You can have a look and you can uh, put the comments on the YouTube or put the comments in the uh, respective blog so that uh, we will be able to answer to you. So I think there is no question and uh, there is no uh, specific subject, sir. Now, I would like to just uh, uh, inform all the participants uh, who are attending that uh, our uh, NFE uh, two-day workshop will be held on uh, 7th and 8th, uh, June 2023 uh, in Ahmedabad. So those who are not registered, I think uh, my colleague Lakshmi was posting the link for registration. Uh, those who are from the west side of the India, can probably join this uh, two-day workshop, uh, very informative workshop uh, for this. Specifically, we are covering on uh, National Electrical Code of India 2023, which is now made mandatory for all electrical installation at consumer premises. So I would request uh, uh, participants to uh, come and join us for at uh, Ahmedabad. With this, uh, we conclude our uh, uh, three series of uh, webinar specially focused on uh, SPDs. Soon we'll come back, uh, come back to you on our upcoming webinar on uh, uh, lightning, you know, and uh, we will uh, let you know the date and time uh, in the mid of uh, second week. So thank you very much. Uh, have a great weekend and look forward to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.